So thanks for joining me today. And today's topic is going to be a relatively short one. And coming back from the infinite banking concept think tank, certainly have a lot of concepts in my mind uh, that I want to share. And for, for those who want to go deeper into learning about the infinite banking concept, I would highly suggest you, you go out and buy uh, R. Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. You can also go on, on the podcast here. We have a series on perspectives on IBC. I did with uh, a friend of mine, Chris Tormey, and we go pretty deep into the various aspects of the infinite banking concept. So you can get a, a hopefully an educational piece uh, from our perspectives as users and practitioners. So you can sort of see and learn uh, more about it. Um, we're very education based, just want to give you some facts so you can sort of make some decisions on your own. So, and today, really, I want to cover uh, some, some basics. You know, there's in, in life, sometimes having rules that are, are, are helpful or at least guidelines to help you sort of think about uh, a life or uh, managing your health, whatever the situation is, having some, some basic rules is helpful. And for the infinite banking concept and for those who maybe have not heard about what this is, essentially it's not an investment, it's not a product, it's a lifestyle and a way of thinking and a process really. And it's really to take over the financing function in your life. You know, that is our biggest need to make purchases for things, to finance and inv invest in our future, our wealth building. And so all of those are wrapped up in the concept of the infinite banking concept and really helps to create an efficient tool and process to uh, manage and, uh, cash in our lives and deploy it for, for good use and create what Nelson Nash would call tailwinds to our financial lives. So it's not an investment, but we, we have to manage our cash in some way. And uh, why not? become your own banker and do that more efficiently for more control and freedom and use of our dollars. So that is a nutshell. Again, a lot of resources surrounding that. But today I want to cover the five rules to the infinite banking concept that laid out by R. Nelson Nash. And they're fairly straightforward. I'll elaborate a little bit more on each of them. They they hit on things more than just money too, right? And it's, it's that's why I love it. It's not it's a kind of a way of life, way of thinking, and it's not so much just all about dollars and cents and rates of return, et cetera. It's really about how you go about controlling, at least in, in, in the financial world, the, our biggest need, right, to finance things. So let's let's go through them and I'll, I'll give you a, a sort of my take and thoughts on on each of them. So the first rule is is. Uh, one that I think is tricky, especially this day and age, is to think long term. You know, there's a idea that let's plan for long term and act now. And and I get it. I think that that's very important. I think we can we, we've got to take action and do things, but we have to think long term about what we're doing. Right. What, regardless of what it is, it, whether it's your personal finances, whether it's uh, managing our relationships with our family and friends to health. Right. These are there are things that we have to be doing on a habitual and uh, daily basis that helps us uh, move forward in that given period, but also thinking about the implications down the road. You know, certainly from a financial uh, lens, it's, it's, it's simple con a simple concept of compounding interest. And, you know, you hear about like a Warren Buffett who's, who's massed billions and billions of dollars, and it took quite a bit of time. That was part of his magic because he's been in it for so long. And to think long term is difficult, right? We're we're so immersed in getting that dopamine hit of you know social media or instant gratification. We we don't we can't defer things. It's it's difficult, and so that is a big challenge, and it's part part of the human uh, behaviors that we have to fight and combat to allow us to win in the long run. And so, IBC is really about thinking long term, right? And that is beyond our lives when we graduate, but generationally and thinking, how could you uh, build wealth and maintain it and build the right habits for generations after you to succeed, right? The biggest example a lot of people use are the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilt. And, you know, the Rockefellers who built businesses, owned banks, you know, uh, 
um, got in the oil business real, and really strived over years um, because they had a very cohesive strategy as a, a family office and family sort of bank. And they were able to push a lot of the values and, and sort of uh, wealth to future generations and continues to grow versus the Vanderbilts that uh, they made a lot of money and, you know, it dissipated in, in multiple generations to the, to this day where most of the descendants of the Vanderbilt family are not millionaires. So you can see where, you know, thinking long-term, you have to kind of, you know, be uh, trusting that these things are going to continue to move on without you when you're not here. But that's why you have to train and, and sort of educate and talk about things with, with kids. So that's, to me, a, a fundamental shift in, in the way we think today. Uh, think long term. And it's hard to do because you have to potentially do consistent things that you don't see any massive movement in the very near term. But we get so uh, used to trying to get that instant gratification that's hard to wait and be patient. So thinking hard long term is, is huge. So the second role within the infinite banking concept, because if you're building your own bank, right, it's almost like a business. And we treat it that way. And that's how we think about it in the philosophy of, of IBC is you're building your own business and financing business. And that requires us to capitalize. So, so the second role is don't be afraid to capitalize. You know, when we think about it and for those who are uh, familiar with the tool we use is especially designed whole life insurance policies through mutual insurance companies. Well, you know, most people equate insurance with, let me put the least amount in, that's what we're taught, least amount in to get protections because I feel like we're wasting money, right? So we don't want to put money into this thing. We've just been trained to think this way. And and insurance is such a huge component just on the surface, uh, separately is a big, big component of protecting our wealth, ensuring we're going to have it in the long run. But, you know, we're always looking for how we can get the cheapest and to put le the least of our money in there so we can go invest it in wherever, stock market, etc. So, but for building our own bank that we want to last for generational wealth is is to be comfortable to capitalize this. You're building a, a, a warehouse of wealth that you know, your family can leverage for obviously your lifetime, but future generations and something that takes some time to build. Uh, but again, it goes back to thinking long term about things. If you're thinking very short term, it can not feel great because you're not seeing massive movements in this, right, in, in terms of return, because it isn't an investment. It is a business you're building that allows you to finance things and control that. So ensuring that you're getting enough capital in there so then you can use it and deploy it. Right. And so this is the a concept that uh, is going to be foreign, especially when you connect it to insurance, is that you're actually feeding a system in a business that you're going you and your family and future generations will be able to leverage in the future. Right. To finance everything in life from purchases to investment. So don't be afraid to capitalize and put money in. It's a, a scary, a potentially scary thing. But, you know, once you get into it now, um, as a lot of my sort of uh, policies and my systems are maturing, uh, I look forward to it, to, to put money in. And, you know, cash goes up by way more than what I put into it. So it's a, and it's getting better each year I own it. So you just have to kind of combine the two of thinking long-term and, and capitalizing a system you're going to benefit uh, from and future generations will benefit from. So the third rule is uh, don't steal the peas. And this is a a fun one where it, it's it's uh, Nelson goes through uh, the ownership of a a grocery store and going through a, a thought process to say if you own that store, uh, would you if you went to go buy a can of peas, which has a very low margin, we know in grocery business, low margin business, would you go out the front door or the back door? And for most people who own the grocery store business, they they think well maybe I'll just go out the back. I don't have to pay for it. It's mine anyway. But Nelson goes on to say that, you know, for every one you take out the back door, which is essentially theft, you have to replace it with 20 cans of sales on uh, out the front door just to compensate for that. So why would you steal your own peas? Well, why don't you go through the front door? Right. And similar in nature to the banking environment. Right. We can easily forget about that and we can go out the back door. Right. Because whether we 
borrow against borrow from somebody that's an easy one to understand you have to pay that back so there's no real backdoor there but if we use our own cash we now give up the ability for that cash to earn for decades and, and generations going forward so we have to replenish that right to our capital base and that's the the sort of the angle that can easily be missed and it's something that i i certainly missed too, thinking that paying cash for everything was the best way, but it disrupts the compounding, which we talked about long term. And now our money stops working. It goes somewhere else, which is uh, the typical uh, approach. So really st don't steal the peas is really recognizing that you are in a, a business now of banking and you don't want to steal from it. Right. If you're going to start this up and understand the, the lifestyle and philosophy that this is helping us to do, then you don't want to steal from it. So we have to if we we're going to borrow against our assets in, in this policy, then we need to pay that back, right? As good stewards of our money and building and paying interest on our money because it would have earned it if we didn't touch it. So it's really a, just a different way of thinking about it. And and so, uh, but using the grocery store analogy, hopefully it, it helps you to sort of get a sense of, of what that really means and that we, we've we actually been stealing from ourselves in some respects. Uh, over time. And so we owe it to, to ourselves and our families to put it back in. So the fourth rule of IBC is don't do business with banks. Now, for most people, that's it, it's crazy. I still use banks. So just full transparency. So this is difficult to do. And, and you know, we do need banks in some respects for transactions and things of that nature, but not, not for long-term storage of our wealth. And then we only, you know, uh, they give us little to nothing in, on that, and then we got to go borrow from them and pay them a bunch of interest. So why can't you just control that that whole environment? And that's what becoming a banker is about. And maybe over long periods of time, as you're building up your system and your business of banks, that you might be able to strip out the use of banks for the majority of big purchases, homes, uh, investing in business, funding education, you name it, all the, the larger ticket items. But uh you know, that that's, I think, in my mind, the, the true intent of it for some of the transactional stuff, at least as it, as it works today. And who knows when uh, down the road what that might look like with digital currencies, etc., whatever, and, and crypto. But for now, it's really about, hey, how do we uh, remove banks as much as we can, the commercial banking system out of our lives as much as possible so that we can have control and freedom of use of our dollars? Really, that's really the heart of it. So um, it's something that can be done over a, a period of time. And even in Nelson's book, he said it, it took him uh, quite a number of decades to finally get there. But now they're not relying on banks to finance anything. And it's something they've set the course for their families and uh, through a system of policies and how they control and utilize uh, the funds in there and, and the life insurance company's money. So the last rule here uh, is really, I, I use this lightly because I, I think most people are thinking, but we get so busy and bogged down that that sometimes we can't even stop for a moment because we're just so crazy busy is to rethink your thinking. And, you know, we it, I, I saw a quote from Henry Ford one day and it, it, it actually just made me chuckle. It said the, the hardest thing in the world to do is think. And that's why very few people do it. And it's difficult, right? I get it. You know, we, we get so trained on certain things and we we can, our human behavior says, I, I've arrived. I, I know everything I need to know about something, but it requires a different type of person to, to, to be open to learning, to, to constantly reflecting on things and, and evolving, right? Because some things do not hold all, all the time and it's going to change, right? Life is inevitable. That's why I, uh, a concept in my head, I said, I embrace impermanence because nothing will change, stay the same, right? There are some things that are just, constantly in motion. They may shift um, the core elements of it may be there, but things are going to evolve and 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 people are going to innovate. People are going to use their creativity to build on things. So it's it's just something we have to embrace and be comfortable with. And that requires us to think about things a little bit more. We it's often hard to stop for a moment, to take a walk, to, you know, the proverbial smell the roses. Like Life can really get crazy and it requires us to stop for moments of time and just reflect on things and think about it and be open to learning from people from the other side 
to to hear their vantage point because their their opinions are valid too. It's just that they may have coming from a different perspective, and that will hopefully shape our own minds to make sure that we're thinking about it correctly. And I'm always testing that. So rethink your thinking is, I think, a clever way to to, to just really focus on learning about the truth and then allowing people to for you to decide if it's right for you. Not every solution, every tool, especially in the financial world is right for everybody. And so we all have to come to that realization and learn for ourselves what fits for us and in our families and what we're trying to achieve. Now, it also requires as we continuously learn, which is not something, I mean, we, I have kids who were younger now getting into college and thinking about that and, and, and hopefully how do you set the road for them that, that they're never going to stop learning. They're always in school. They're always willing to expand their horizons and learn something new to uh, add to what they've already developed and, and understand. And so you, 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 that only comes with time and willingness to actually sometimes be wrong about something, which is not an easy thing. I get it. And so, but that's where uh, people who are getting ahead and succeeding and evolving um, are open to that and are humble about it. Even if they've uh, uh, achieved tremendous success in life, um, they're always learning. They're always looking for something else to expand and, and become better. And this reminds me of the uh, the, the uh, fixed and growth mindset, right? Car Carol Dweck and her book around, you know, having a fixed mindset versus a growth one. And having growth one in indicates that yeah, you can learn something. You always can learn something new. It's not We're not set in stone here uh, by birth to be able to do certain things. So we, we do need to uh, recognize that, to expand our, uh, what we're doing and, and become the person we're meant to be, right? And reach our highest potential. And that's really the heart of it. So I hope this was helpful in, in some way to help you think about it. I Like again, I would highly encourage you to read uh, Becoming Your Own Banker. It's not just about finances or whole life or, you know, rates of return. It's really a, a lifestyle, a way of thinking about things that will hopefully empower you to, to sort of um, expand your thinking and, and continue to progress in your life, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, it's really a tremendous thinking book, too. So I really highly and, and also um, uh, if you want to learn more about the uh, becoming a banker philosophy, I, you know, there's uh, the podcast series I did with Chris Tormey, the IB perspectives on IBC. I would highly recommend you can go to perennialpride.com and check that out and, and consume that over time. And hopefully it'll be helpful for you too and your learning. So take care and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining me on this episode today. I really am grateful for you as listeners to the Perennial Pride podcast. I hope you're getting some tremendous value out of it and hopefully pushing you along your journey to financial freedom. You know, I put this podcast together really to help sort of help you get more educated around your finances so that you feel empowered to live the life that you really want. And if you like the content that you heard today or watched, then I would encourage you to go to my website, perennialpride.com. There's tons of other content there and you can access my book, Wealth Beyond the Numbers. You can buy it there on my website. It's a aggregation of a lot of great tips and tools I've learned to not only build my wealth in my my accounts, but build wealth in my life and abundance and joy and something that has a lot of my experiences and the journey that I've been on personally. Hopefully that can be also of value to you as you sort of move forward. So thanks again for being a Cranial Pride listener and we'll see you on the next episode.